I'm your host, Walt Samuel, with the Florida Aviation Network. We are broadcasting live from the Aerospace Discovery section of the Florida Air Museum in the Sun and Fun Complex at Lakeland, Florida. This is the 41st annual exposition and fly-in. Our guests today, Charles Stites and John Herman. We'll start with Charles. Charles, tell me a little bit about Able Flight. What do they do and, and how many people have you worked with? Well, Able Flight is a scholarship organization and mentoring organization for bringing people with disabilities into aviation, physical disabilities. Uh, I founded it in 2006. We've awarded, as of today, 60 scholarships. Uh, and those go to a variety of people with physical disabilities such as paraplegia, quadriplegia, uh, veterans who've lost limbs, uh, people with congenital birth issues, and we train them to become licensed pilots or offer them uh, scholarships for careers in aviation. I looked at your webpage and I noticed that you had three veterans from the recent Afghanistan activity uh, where they lost a uh, limb and you were teaching them to fly. And I'm glad to see that people are able to achieve their goal, even though they have a handicap. Years ago, there was a Navy pilot that lost both legs in, a, in an ejection when the airplane started to come apart. And um, he didn't see it as a handicap, he saw it as a challenge. And I bet a lot of your people see that. Well, I think that's consistent with every one of our scholarship recipients. They, they do take it as a challenge, and we actually intentionally make it more of a challenge. We offer an intensive training program, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. But uh, as to the veterans, yes, we originally thought we would offer the maybe 20% or so of our scholarships to wounded veterans, and we've actually beaten that number. We're close to 30%. We have, I think, 9 or 10 wounded vets who are already uh, licensed pilots through Able Flight. Outstanding. You uh, you started Able Flight in 2006. Were you the executive director at the time? Well, I founded it and then became executive director. We put together a board very quickly. We uh, incorporated it. I incorporated it uh, in May of that year, so we've got our ninth anniversary, I guess it is, coming up here pretty soon. And started awarding scholarships at the end of 2006. Had our first people in training in 2007 and our first people licensed in 2007. Um, our board of directors, a wonderful group of folks, I mean, we've rotated people through over this last nine years, but they include a, a flight instructor, wounded veteran, these are people who have served on the board, uh, a uh, aviation medical examiner, although we haven't had much need for him because we use the sport pilot rule, uh, and then we have a wonderful advisory board from people within the aviation community uh, that support us and give us ideas and direction of where to go. Great. <coughs> John, I understand you are one of the ones that provides some of the scholarships. Yes, uh, we, we were fortunate last year at the invitation of Sennheiser to attend um, the Able Flight Benefit Dinner in, uh, in New Orleans. And um, after attending that dinner, we honestly just fell in love with uh, what Charles was doing and and uh, his organization. And we're very fortunate that uh, we're in a position where we are able to uh, uh, sponsor a platinum level of scholarship for the next three years for, uh, for Able Flight. John, you mentioned the word platinum level. What does that mean? Well, Charles is probably better, <laughs> better to explain that, but. Well, we have our scholarships are at different levels so that people can come in on different levels if that's what works for them. Uh, platinum levels are highest. It's $8,000 a year and gives us, on average, the amount of uh, money that we need to train someone to sport pilot level. Uh, so with John's company, Tempest, making a three-year commitment, uh, we also honor that by uh, naming the scholarship for them for that three years. So it's the Tempest slash Able Flight Scholarship. Sounds great, John. What do you see the, in the future with Tempest and this Able Flight program? Well, we're really excited about it, and um, we we want to continue um, indefinitely with uh, Able Flight for as long as we're able to. Uh, we're just excited 
and inspired by the stories of the people that uh, that are sponsored and um, um, we are we're actually uh, honoring um, my wife's late husband who was a pilot and unfortunately uh, perished in a plane crash and we're naming this scholarship after or in his memory uh, Lloyd Smith so we we're excited about it and uh, we want to continue with Able Flight indefinitely Charles, with Able Flight, and you started in 2006, what do you see for the future? Well, the program is really well established by now, which makes made me very happy because, you know, at some point I'll pass this along to someone else to do. And one of the things I'm most proud of that we've accomplished that we will see continuing into the future is our relationship with universities teaching our pilots. Uh, we're coming up on our sixth year as a training partner with Purdue University's Department of Aviation Technology. And that's been absolutely incredible. Uh, our students are getting an intensive training program there in a very welcoming environment. They're getting it at a really high level, uh, such that over the last five years, our success rate is 100%. Every student we have sent to Purdue so far is now a licensed pilot. Uh, so we want to continue that. I'd like to see us expand to another university perhaps over the next few years as our program continues to expand. We've also, uh, over the last three years, started offering, i uh, say four years actually, aviation career training scholarships. And we've awarded, uh, I think, 10 or 12 of those, of, of our 60 total. And these are people who can become light sport repair people, light sport repairmen with a maintenance rating to work on LSAs. Uh, we have several dispatchers, airline dispatchers, that we have uh, provided scholarships for. And these are people, again, with a variety of physical disabilities. So this is a pathway, a career pathway, for them to get into aviation. So we're very happy about that. Your relationship with Purdue, is this a, a, a summer activity or is it year-round? No, it's a good, that's a great question because what we do is we send people for a six-week training period, intensive uh, training that begins in mid-May and goes to the 1st of July. Uh, we time it so that it's the end of their spring semester. So our students live on campus. They fly at the university-owned airport in airplanes that Able Flight provides. We, and I should say we don't own these airplanes. We rent them, lease them, and send them there. And these are adapted airplanes based on the needs of the students. Uh, so for six weeks, they'll fly in the morning. They go to ground school class in the middle of the day, and they fly in the evening. Uh, and that's the, that's the program. Uh, and it has worked remarkably well. I've seen some of those programs, and they're excellent. Eat, sleep, breathe, fly. That's exactly <laughs> it. I've been a pilot for 58 years and enjoyed every minute of it. John, what do you, uh, what do you think will happen with uh, uh, expanding this program? Will you be able to uh, be involved in that? We hope to. Um, of course, we're, you know, we manufacture a, a line of products for general aviation, and as long as. Um, as long as our business continues to grow and develop, we we feel that we want to give something back to the industry, and this is this is our prim primary way of doing that. And so we we look to be involved with Charles in whatever way he'll have us, and uh, and uh, continue to be involved and help his program grow. Thank you for putting some of that back into aviation. We need Absolutely. all the support we can get. Absolutely. We need to. We need a few new pilots out there. <laughs> so I guess I'm down to one last question, John. What have I not asked you about at this point? Well, um, maybe I could just give a quick background into the history of Tempest. Sure. Um, Tempest was actually <laughs> founded in 2001 uh, by uh, Stan Fletcher and Kim Henderson. And I came on about a year later. Uh, Stan has since retired. And um, and I uh, bought him out a couple of years ago, and we manufacture um, pneumatic systems uh, for aircraft, fuel pumps, spark plugs, and oil filters. And uh, we are greatly involved in the industry. Um, the partners in the in the company, I think the shortest time partner has been involved in 10 years. I've been involved for 38 years, and so this is this is our life, and uh, this is what we want to support. Now, when you said you're making these parts, is that for GA aircraft or all aircraft? It is. It is for GA aircraft. Everything that we manufacture currently is for reciprocating engine 
Uh, we don't manufacture anything for uh, turbine or turboprop. Yeah, you mentioned working with engines, uh, Lycoming, Continental, that type of engine. Yes. Doesn't have anything to do with the manufacturer like Cessna or Piper. We also work with uh, the OE the airframe OEMs as well. Uh, because most of our products uh, are accessorized on the engine itself, uh, obviously Continental and Lycoming are very important to us. And uh, two years ago, Continental started using Tempest spark plugs and oil filters exclusively on everything that comes out of Mobile. But we also work with Cessna, Cirrus, uh, Robinson, and a lot of the other airframe OEMs as well. Pretty interesting. Charles? With Able Flight, mm -hmm. what type? You said you provide light sport aircraft for training mm -hmm. and for use. What uh, What are your requirements for them? Because you said they were modified. Right. Well, we've been using a couple of different airplanes. I could probably have used four or five total, but uh, the two that we've had the best experience with so far, and we use most often, are the Sky Arrow 600, which is an Italian design. Originally started as a Part 23 certified airplane, and then they uh, took a little bit of weight out and made it an LSA. And that one comes from the factory with adapted hand controls. And there's a wonderful uh, video on our website, ableflight.org, uh, and the galleries page, or under the videos page, where you can see someone demonstrating how you fly that airplane with the adapted controls. Uh, we've also used a Flight Design CP, which now can come with adapted controls as well. Some of our students need those controls, some don't but we have them there just in case. The airplanes can be flown either way. Um, I would like to say at this point how important it is for companies like John's, like Tempest, to ste step up and help an organization like ours. Uh, when Able Flight began, we were very small. We were telling people, you know, imagine this. This is what we could do. Well, now we're doing it, but we can only do it with the help of someone like John. So that's, that's critical. And this three-year commitment, that certainly makes our planning a lot easier uh, to look out ahead. The other thing I would say uh, is that for people who are watching this that maybe are dealing with a physical disability, come to our website. You know, look at your opportunities within aviation. If they apply for a scholarship and are awarded, it'll change their life forever. So they just go to ableflight.org, look at the Frequently Asked Questions page, and then go to the scholarships page where they can download an application form. You said you've had 60 scholarships in, in the history of the company, and you're looking forward to expanding that in the future. With uh, Purdue, and you, you mentioned another university, uh, what do you think would be the size of the, the training fleet in the next five years or so? Well, um, what we think of it is in terms of total scholarships each year, you know, right now we're hitting around 10 or 11 each year. I would love to see us, well, I'd love to see us double that, but that's, that's uh, a dream right now, and, and it's a good one to have, and we'll work towards it. But uh, if we had another uh, university uh, campus uh, that we could work with at the level we're working with at Purdue, we could train, uh, say, 12 people a year at the university, another uh, four or five in career training scholarships. And then every now and then we do something different. It doesn't fit that university mold and it's not uh, aviation career training. For example, we have two people in training right now at two different flight schools in the country and it's just, it works out because that fit their particular need and it wasn't possible for them to go to Purdue. So I'd say, you know, if we could, my dream would be that by the time that I turn this over to someone else, we have uh, 18 or 20 scholarships a year. That would be wonderful. Okay. I think uh, I'd like to s learn more about that scholarship program. There's a, there's a lot of programs out there that, that offer scholarships to young people, but mm -hmm. very, very few. And maybe you're the only one that actually works with disabled people to get them into the system. Now, their ultimate goal is a, a private certificate. Well, we, we use the sport pilot certificate as the basis for our program because people can use a driver's license a, as a medical. They have a valid and current driver's license. And so for people who have often faced barriers into getting medical certification for a third class, um, and it can be a tough process depending on the nature of the disability, they can use this driver's license medical and become a sport pilot. At that point, we have taken them about 75% of the way through training for a private pilot. 
So we have a number who have gone on to become private pilots who did go and get a medical. Um, but we have people who, uh, one of the people we're training right now uh, is just a remarkable story. He's a gentleman who was, and it's on our website, he was born without hands or feet. And he is training for his ATP right now. And that's an aviation career scholarship. He's already a commercial pilot. He is a CFI, CFI instrument. He's got four to 500 hours of multi-time in a Cessna 421, flying for a company in the Midwest. He wants to move up, so we're supporting him for that. So our program is broad-based and uh, offers many different opportunities. Primarily, it's intended to provide people with this incredible challenge that changes their life, the way they think about themselves and the way other people think about them. Uh, the, uh, what they are are just like anybody else who wants to learn to fly. So we make it possible, and that's the primary goal. But we're open to these other ideas. If someone has an idea for a career that we can support and it makes sense, we do it. You mentioned uh, the individual flying the 421 and working on the ATP. Mm -hmm. Now that's, mm -hmm. that's airline transport pilot. That's mm -hmm. a very high rating and a difficult one to achieve. Mm -hmm. How's the uh, six? Well, he's the first one, so you don't have a success rate except <laughs> it will be a hundred percent. If he passes his check ride, it'll be a hundred percent, and I'm ho I'm very hopeful, uh, and that can come very soon. Uh, he's he's in his training right now. Uh, but we look at someone uh, like him, his name is Randy Green, we look at someone like Randy and we say, you know, you've proven yourself in so many ways already. We're not really taking much of a chance there. We're just making it possible. And so uh, companies like Tempest and our other sponsors and individual donors, uh, that's their legacy. You know, that, that's, what they, that's what they get out of this. You know, w at the end of these three years, there'll be three Tempest able flight pilots. There'll be three people that John can look to and say, you know, our company did that. And so that's, that's what's valuable here. And what's imp that's what's important about this announcement today. John, thank you very much for saving some people. Otherwise, in our society, they might have been just thrown aside because they're disabled. And I know that every one of them has a great attitude or they wouldn't be working to become a pilot. They do. I think the 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 event that really won me over, aside from the dinner, was uh, Charles invited my wife and I to attend the wing pinning ceremony at Oshkosh. And um, I have to tell just this quick story. I had a very painful back that day as I sat in that chair, and I was complaining about my back and everything else. And then I saw these these uh, people up on the stage with their disabilities, which really aren't a disability at all. Um, overcoming some of the obstacles that they overcome and it was incredibly inspirational and uh, and I realized my back doesn't hurt so bad so we we were inspired by what we saw and we're just we're just grateful to Charles for the opportunity to, to do this you know Walt if I could John John mentioned uh, the wings pinning ceremony at, at Air Ventures and that's, uh, we have this big benefit every year. We're doing it in Houston this year. But the wings pinning ceremony is my favorite event as well because it's the moment or the time when people get to see our pilots up on stage being honored with this set of Able Flight wings that only they can wear. I can't wear them no matter how much yeah. money John's company <laughs> would give us. John can't have a set. Only our pilots because they earn them. And in the audience for that are people like our sponsors, but it's also their families, you know, their spouses, their kids. And they're looking up on that stage and they're seeing someone like Patty Wagstaff up there pinning a set of wings on an able flight pilot. And they're looking at their husband or their wife or their son or daughter in a new way, a totally new way, uh, as a pilot and being honored by this crowd. So that's on July 21st, Tuesday. It's always on a Tuesday in the morning in the plaza at Air Venture. And we'd love to have twice as many people come and honor our pilots as we've ever had. So, Charles, you mentioned going through the program and, and getting your support pilot and maybe going on as, mm -hmm. as one individual is going for his ATP, but specifically after graduation in the sport pilot. Mm -hmm. What happens next for them? 
a number of our pilots are very fortunate in that they live close enough to an air, I mean, to, uh, to one of these airplanes that they can rent. And as more and more of the adapted airplanes uh, come onto the market, uh, there are more of those opportunities. It, but it is one of the great challenges is what do you do next? Uh, we've had several go on and uh, actually end up staying at Purdue, become enrolling at Purdue, and they're in the graduate school program there in aviation. One a quadriplegic who's now finished the program and is working for the FAA in Washington. So we took him through sport pilot, and then we gave him aviation career or academic money to some degree. We couldn't cover the whole thing, but we, we helped. Uh, and then he was hired by the FAA. So here's a young man who's a quadriplegic, who's now in Washington, D.C., living on his own, working a full-time job. Uh, we have another who's there uh, who is working uh, for his uh, doctorate. He just was accepted into the program there. He's one of our pilots who went there a few years ago. Uh, we had one who was there last year who we then supported for dispatcher training, and he just finished his training last month. Uh, at a program at Universal Weather and Aviation in Houston, uh, another one of our sponsors, and we're very proud to have them support us as well. Uh, a young woman who was our first woman pilot is now a dispatcher for American Airlines, and we supported her for her dispatcher training. Uh, it's, you know, there are many ways for them to find a way. Uh, what we do is we say, we've opened these doors. You know, now you make these choices. For some, it's enough to have gone through it because then they're inspired to look for a job. They're inspired to enter a college program somewhere else. You get to the point, you said you've been a pilot for 50 years, I've been a pilot for 30 some years, and, and, and we kind of take it for granted sometimes, you know, this wonderful thing that we all can do. But you, you take someone who's maybe a year or two ago was in a tragic accident, or a terrible accident, I should say, and they were very active, and now they're using a wheelchair. And then they become a pilot. Well, they're going to see the world differently. They're going to know how self-reliant they can be. Because I, I always tell people, you're never more self-reliant than when you're solo in that airplane for the first time. I mean, you're totally on your own. And that changes you, the way you see yourself and the way you see your abilities. So whether they go on to a career, whether they have an airplane available for them to rent, we have one young man who bought one of the airplanes, and now we lease his airplane and send it to Purdue every year. Uh, but whatever those possibilities, people find a way to make this work for them, to make it pay off. John, how many um, offices do you have nationwide? Do you have just one and, and do a lot of mail order work? All of our uh, manufacturing, uh, we've actually got couple of different manufacturing locations. The primary one is in Gibsonville, North Carolina. Uh, we also have one in uh, uh, Waterford, Michigan, and we just recently acquired Alcor uh, in San Antonio, Texas. So we've got uh, three primary manufacturing facilities right now, and then we've got sales offices in three other locations. Does most of your business deal with the manufacturers? Or do you do a lot with uh, general aviation, uh, the general public, and, and is it mostly uh, mail order? Uh, I guess mail order, uh, internet purchase? Sure. Um, all of our products are sold through a network of distributors. Uh, we, have, uh, we have some, such as Aviol, that uh, pretty much sell, to, uh, sell wholesale to FBOs and uh, maintenance shops and that sort of thing. We also have uh, like Aircraft Spruce, for instance, that sells not only to the maintenance shops, but also to the general public, to a pilot owner. And uh, so as far as our sales, all of our sales go through either an OEM, such as Continental, to be put on their, their engine, or uh, through a distributor who then retails that, that product to the, to the rest of the industry. And we sell our products. We just came back from the show in Germany uh, two days ago. So our products are sold worldwide. Charles, the uh, light sport aircraft, mm -hmm. what powers the aircraft that you're using? Well, they pretty typically all use the Rotex 100 uh, power plant. Uh, and we, I was adding it something up for somebody last year and the Skyer that we've used I think we've done over 1500 hours of training on one of the Skyers uh, and now we've used several but that's a total and it's been incredibly reliable 
Uh, and this kind of gives me a good opportunity to talk about our friends at Purdue University. Because if you think about it, in 2009, I guess it was, Able Flight was still a very young organization. We had maybe 14 or 15 pilots at the time. And I went to Purdue uh, through an introduction uh, by a friend and presented them with a proposal. And this is a school that's been teaching flying for 70 or 80 years, has their own airport, has about 30 airplanes, has a full graduate program, has sent more astronauts through their program than any other school in the nation. And what I proposed to them, as I said, let us bring you people with significant physical disabilities with the kind of airplane you've never used before with different maintenance requirements. And it wasn't quite, the, I wasn't being that glib about it, but, but that was the proposal. And you know, any person sitting there would have read it that way and seen it that way. And there were five people representing Purdue, as I recall, around that conference table. And instead of starting to throw up objections or, you know, well, we've never done it that way kind of thing, one of them said, and I think it was the dean, said, when do we begin? And I thought, well, I, we have found our partner here. And that has been, it's been wonderful partnership. And so uh, we, sit, we lease these light sport airplanes, the Sky Arrow, the Flight Design CT. Um, one of the companies we've worked with that's been a wonderful partner is Hanson Air Group, and they're on display out here in, in Paradise City, and I hope people will go by and visit them. Great folks, family-owned business. They import that Sky Arrow. Uh, but we lease these airplanes, we send them up there, and then young Purdue instructors, you know, juniors, seniors, graduate students, who now vie for the opportunity to be the able flight instructors each year, they get checked out in these airplanes, they give up their summers, and they stay there, and they teach someone that maybe is a veteran who lost both legs, or a person paralyzed in an accident. Uh, and invariably, they say, this was the best experience of my life. I always love hearing that from somebody who's 21, because I think, well, you know, how much <laughs> life is, but they, that's what they say. And it, we've had about 20 instructors now, because each student gets their own instructor. So this year, for the six students to go up there, there'll be six Purdue instructors. There's a wonderful professor up there, uh, Bernard Woolley, who's been with this program since the beginning, uh, and has supported it. Uh, he's been our champion there at Purdue. Uh, so these students will live in, in their own dorm room, and the ones that need an adapted dorm room, they'll have it. They'll be five minutes from the airport, and they'll use their wheelchair, or maybe they'll bring a car, and they'll go down to the airport in the morning, and as hot as it is in, in uh, June and July, and early July in Indiana, uh, they'll get in that airplane and fly, no excuses. And then they'll go to class, and then they'll do it all over again in the evening, and they'll stay there till they're finished. They don't leave, they, that's the program. Um, so these, these LSAs that we bring in from around the country, uh, this year we have one from Atlanta, one from Philadelphia, and one from Maine. Uh, we prepare months and months in advance. We get the airplanes there. Purdue does the maintenance on them. Uh, while they're there, they're hangered in a special hangar just for able flight during those six weeks. And the students dispatch out of there. It's a beautifully run uh, uh, organization there. And uh, what we have found is that the whole sport pilot LSA movement that started about 10 years ago, this is one of the unintended benefits of it. And uh, it's a beautiful benefit. So, so all, the, uh, all the instructors are then uh, FAA instructor, uh, rated instructor oh yeah. instructors. Mm -hmm. uh, are they all volunteers? Yes, they, 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 like I said, they give up their summers to stay there. And we usually have a couple people that carry over year to year, which gives us a lot of good continuity. And one of those becomes our lead flight instructor for the next year. Quite a program. Thank I you. hope to see it grow. Uh, like you said, I'd like to see it in other universities because there's a lot of people out there with the disabilities that probably aren't aware of it until they see this particular tape. Mm -hmm. Well, Charles, John, we're glad you could be with us to help us celebrate Sun and Fun's 41st year. And thank you for joining us with the Florida Aviation Network in Sun and Fun in Lakeland, Florida.